Chapter 2, 3, 5, and 7 of the Livingston Municipal Code, modifying current cannabis regulations, Ordinance 632, to expand opportunities for cannabis business operations in the city of Livingston. We got Randy coming up, thank you. Good evening, council uh, members. Um, I'm Randy Hash, I'm your um, contract city planner. And the item before you is to give direction to staff regarding whether or not to amend um, Title V, chapters two, three, five, and seven of the municipal code to modify the current cannabis regulations found in ordinance three, uh, excuse me, 632 um, for the purpose of expanding opportunities for ca cannabis businesses within the, the city of Livingston. So that's why you're here. Now, um, the owner and applicant is Dwight Larks and he is requesting um, several amendments to the existing cannabis uh, code provisions. Specifically, um, he is requesting five separate amendments. One of them is, first one, to uh, allow specified, specific cannabis activities within the downtown commercial zone, the DTC zone. And that would be cannabis manufacturing, cannabis distribution, cannabis microbusiness, which is um, three or more of those um, items. The second part of the request is to allow cannabis delivery and associated retail sales as part of that delivery in the downtown commercial zone. Um, the third request is to eliminate the 600-foot distance requirement between a cannabis activity and a school, daycare, child care, or youth center. The fourth request is to eliminate the 400-foot distance requirement between a cannabis activity and a residential use park library, or land zoned for residential use. Now this request of Mr. Lark's has a citywide application, and these four um, amendments would modify the existing cannabis uh, code provisions. Now the owner and applicant has um, property in the downtown at the corner of Main and B Street. The city's cannabis regulations were adopted in December of, of 2017 and allow cannabis activities um, only within the city's industrial zone, which is M1, limited industrial, or M2, um, general industrial. And so that's the reason for the first of these four requests, is to expand the zones that cannabis activities would be allowed in. Um, the current code does not allow any retail sales of cannabis within the city at all. The applicant wishes to, as, as noted uh, above, engage in a delivery service of cannabis sales. And that would mean that the, um, um, the, the delivery would involve a sales transaction, and that sale would be um, booked or placed in the location where those delivery trucks come from, which is um, the proposed uh, business, which is downtown commercial zone. So that's the second part of the request. And because of the various, um, um, this would apply to the entire um, downtown commercial zone. And within that downtown commercial zone, there are sensitive uh, land uses, such as uh, residential uses, schools, daycare centers, youth centers, um, 
parks and libraries that are within those distance requirements that I mentioned before. And so that's the reason for the third and the fourth request. Um, now, you, you may recall um, that this request originally started its uh, city reviews and analysis in early 2019. And so the case, the, the request first came to the um, staff. We scheduled it for um, planning commission um, consideration. And it went to the planning commission at a notice public hearing on April the 9th, uh, 2019. Um, and the materials from that um, hearing, in terms of letters and other things, have been included in your uh, information as an attachment. Now, um, we had a lengthy hearing at that time, and there were a wide uh, variety of public comments uh, before the Planning Commission. A total of six letters were received. Five of those letters were in opposition. Um, and they came primarily associated with the Livingston schools. And um, there were also a number of letters from parents. And there was a petition um, with 130 signatures from um, um, the Yamato Colony um, School. And there was another petition with 23 signatures for the Selma Herndon School. The Planning Commission um, evaluated um, all that they had heard and they actually um, um, made a um, recommendation um, not to proceed with these uh, proposed changes. And um, after that recommend, a negative recommendation, Mr. Larks requested that his proposal not go forward to the council so he could um, take a look at it, uh, evaluate the recommended denial from the council, and um, analyze that. And so on February of, of this year, Mr. Larks um, came to you and, and made a presentation on his revised proposal. And after um, receiving what he thought was a um, positive um, uh, reception, he went ahead and um, asked staff to bring the item forward to you. And so um, the item is now before you. And um, that's the purpose of, of this particular notice public hearing. Now, um, Staff is of the opinion that these proposed amendments or modifications is primarily a community values type of uh, request. And it's one that um, staff, as technical um, experts, we don't feel qualified to step into that arena. This is a policy decision, and staff does not make policy recommendations. We make technical recommendations and recommendations of fact. So, um, so because of that, um, I have not provided you with specific recommendations, recommendations either for approval or for denial. That being said, um, if whatever you decide to do, you should have some reasons for an approval or reasons for a denial. And so I have um, provided in your, your materials some possible reasons for approval, and I have provided the um, Planning Commission uh, recommendation for denial with their reasons, which you, of course, um, if you feel they apply, you could use them if you're uh, moving in that direction. If, uh, and as your staff, I am um, 
ready, willing, and able to assist you to come up with your own recommendations, either for approval or for denial. Um, so that's something that we can, um, as you go forward on this, we can um, um, uh, work on. Now, since this is a ordinance change, what we're looking for is really guidance and direction from you in how to proceed with this. Because if you choose to um, advance this, it does have to come back to you because um, it Excuse me. An ordinance takes um, two times before the council um, to, to take final action. So um, I just also want to let you know that um, and and has been placed on your dais. There, we did receive five email communications from the public. Um, after we had prepared the uh, materials for the um, uh, the staff report, we prepared them on Friday. But since that time, um, five communications have come in. Three are recommending um, against this request, and two are recommending in favor of the request. And so that's um, the latest information that we have in terms of, of public response. Now at this time, um, I'll, I'll stop my comments, and if you have any questions of the history or the technical nature and so forth, I'll be happy to address those. Thank you, Randy. Council questions? Comments? Council member? Osamona? At the moment, I have no questions, but I would like to hear from the rest of, uh, of the council and the uh, citizens. Thank you. Councilmember Maria Soto, any questions or comments? I can appreciate your um, presentation and going over all the information once again. Um, the presentation that was brought to us early in February was is quite different than the approach that planning um, took. Again, I feel that when it came to planning back in April 2019, it was it was a bit out of control. Um, and misinformed throughout the community, especially in our schools that um, provided all the signatures and uh, uh, letters of wanting to deny the project moving forward. Again, it's about educating our community on what it is that is, tr it is going to be accomplished with a project such as this, Again, it's empowering the council to make these kinds of decisions on policy and uh, providing a safer environment on the corner of, of B and Main. So again, the presentation, if, if you were not here for that or did not go back to the YouTube and review the actual project, it is not what many of these letters well, half of the, it was five of them, so um, some are opposed and some are for it. And again, the idea is not a dispensary located in your downtown district. Um, so my comment on that is I, for one, and, and uh, knowing the safety of our residents, especially our youth, the ones that supposedly are walking throughout, again, they're walking down Main Street, they're passing by our liquor stores, they're passing by Rite Aid and Dollar General, who also provide uh, types of uh, cannabis products. So again, to say that there's going to be an, an influx of activity going on in our downtown district would be false. So again, I just want to make that clear that if you were not able to preview that presentation that was given at the beginning of February or um, see the YouTube video on what is to be taking place in regards to the project, then I believe there's more education to be brought to our community so that there is a better understanding of what is going to take place. Thank you. Mayor President Garcia, any comment? 
Other questions? Thank you. Um, in regards to myself, um, uh, I have a quick question. That, um, what, what's the specific reason it didn't go back to the Planning Commission? Is it because it was denied almost two years ago? Um, I'm not sure I got all that. Let me re repeat what I think I heard, oh. and and that is, um, will the um, if you if the council wishes to move forward, does it have to go back to the Planning Commission? No. Uh, how come it didn't start at the Planning Commission this time around? Because the um, request is, a, it's part of the same request. Now, there are differences. Um, the uh, part of the um, delivery um, is different than what originally went um, to the council. But it still has the same um, um, basic application, and so it's a kind of a continuation of that request in the idea of modifying between the council presentation uh, after the um, uh, planning commission hearing um, in preparation for the council is not an unusual thing. Um, many requests, um, use permit, um, variance, uh, they are modified. D depending on what the comments and, and um, public hearing before the Planning Commission. So in light of that uh, custom and practice, um, we, um, I took it forward, um, and I might add the, uh, um, the applicant um, didn't pay another fee, didn't file another application, so we don't consider it a new request, we considered it as a modified request. And it was the applicant to, to answer uh, the mayor's uh, question more more direct. So the applicant requested that the item come directly to the council, and so therefore uh, it's on the council agenda, and it was under a public hearing request. Correct. And um, you know, and the applicant is is here, and uh, you need uh, to you know protocols are that after your questions me and and so forth that the some time would be given to the applicant to make their his presentation thank you thank you for the answer um yeah if um the applicant wants to make a statement or provide some information at this time yeah i think i think the applicant is is uh, ready to do that so i will yield the um lectern um to mr larks Thank you, Council, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, public. Appreciate being here. Uh, the reason we brought this to you is to sort of kind of give you a history of, of where we've been through this process here in the city of Livingston. When we initially applied for our application, looking at the situation that was going on in the city of Merced, approving dispensaries, City of Atwater approving dispensaries, City of Merced approving grow operations, City of Atwater approving grow operations, City of Merced approving manufacturing distribution, Atwater manufacturing distribution, seeing Turlock approving manufacturing distribution dispensaries, Modesto manufacturing distribution dispensaries. I noticed that my hometown is in the middle of all that activity. And so I filed a zoning text amendment knowing that we have dilapidated properties in the downtown area, which are either gonna turn into more liquor stores or you know other things, uh, or they're not, or they're gonna sit empty. We have about 20,000 square feet of empty commercial space. And I'm aware that people think they have a problem with, with this plant, but they, for the most part, these people don't really understand the plant, the history of it. Like my mom had cancer, and uh, she used cannabis along with her chemotherapy, which was recommended by her doctors, and she's alive today. Now, in the city council meeting, I had principals of schools saying, well, my dad died of cancer and we still wouldn't use cannabis if we did it again. You can call my mom. You can call her, she's alive, and she used cannabis. 
So there's people that have a problem with cannabis, but you know I, I'm not a fan of like the New York Jets, right? But if the New York Jets wanted to come in town and put something on, I wouldn't stand in their way. It's a good thing for everybody else that's involved. So the meeting at the planning commission was a lot of yelling and screaming, and it was really out of control. And there was no there was no decorum there. And um, you know I was told that they passed out this document telling people that we were going to open a dispensary in downtown and that the principal was out there getting signatures on school grounds telling everyone it was going to be a dispensary when in fact we don't have parking for a dispensary the dispensary has nothing to do with our project we want to produce medicine that saves people's lives and we want to be able to deliver that medicine to people so that we can have that interaction with them and give them that education that they need on how to use it you know how does this work with chemo and how does this work with with, with other things that you might be taking or not taking. So we want to provide that education directly to the patient. This is, we've got nothing to do with on-site people coming to our, our building. Our building is closed to the public like it is right now. You know, we could be having this activity in there right now and you wouldn't be able to tell. The only difference that's gonna happen is that we are going to improve that corner, make it safer, and provide the tax revenue that all these other cities are taking from our town. So really that's why I wanted to bring it back to you uh, and to just to let you know how that the, the process has really been unjust for us um, with school people, uh, principals, you know, making outlandish comments about, about, uh, about what we're trying to do. Incorrect information was out there. And we'd be more than happy to bring some of the teachers here that felt they were pressured to, to sign that document early on. Um, but if you'd like to take it back to the council, we'd be more than happy to go back to the council uh, and, and, you know, and, and kind of update them and then bring it back here. Thank you, Dwight. Appreciate it. Any questions for the applicant council? What's that? So um, also for public uh, information, so you, I think you already covered this and it's a question that I had. In regards to associated here on the document on number two, it says request to allow cannabis delivery and associated uh, retail sales in the downtown commercial zone. Uh, what does that mean exactly, associated retail sales? I think you already mentioned something about it, uh, where you're not, gonna, you're not looking to have people coming in and out, and, but w what does that mean, associated retail sales? So in essence, associated retail sales is, is, is what that means to us is simply that it's the information that goes along with the retail sale at the home. We would take the order at the facility, the driver would be dispatched to deliver the product. There'd be no public coming to our building. We are closed facility to the public, no access. The doors are $2,000 each, you can't get in, you're not allowed to get in, there's security 24 hours a day. And so it, it, it really, uh, it, we, just to be 100% explicitly clear, no one in here is allowed in that building ever, unless it's the police department or somebody else. This is a building that is like a laboratory making these items and making these products. So if you were here, and you were told that we're going to be offering retail at the building, you should go and find out why you were told that. If, if I may answer that question, um, when you make a delivery, that's a retail sales activity. Um, the um, state has to locate that somewhere um, for retail sales purposes, and um, the sales tax goes to some jurisdiction and so forth. And so that um, sale needs to have a, a location, a, a home for it. And so that home is um, Mr. Lark's business. Um, and so that doesn't mean, um, and it was not the intent of, of me writing the staff report, to say that he'll be selling out of his business 
in the downtown, but those sales that do occur on as part of the delivery service has to come from has to be booked some physical location, and so that's what um, that phrase um, means: is that it'll it will indicate um, that it it's a sale in. Um, a, a zone that allows sales in downtown Livingston. Okay, so if I, if I understand this correctly, what you're saying is that, that, and I'm assuming this because you guys haven't heard it, so would someone be calling in an order and then how do, how do you know who's ordering, who's making that order, someone that actually has a medical card or something like that. I have no idea, so you have to explain this to me. And so someone picks up the phone, takes that order, verifies the information, then that delivery schedule to that person's home. Is that what you're saying? Or is that for you? Or? No, oh, it's for yeah, you. <laughs> that, that's correct. So, what, so typically what happens, Council Member Moran, is and thank you for the question, uh, allows us to clarify, is when someone goes online and they see an advertisement for a, a licensed delivery business, they can call the phone number or they can place their order through the internet. And what is required when someone calls in is they have to send a copy of their driver's license or ID proving that they are 21 years old or over. Now the address on the ID has to match the address where the delivery is taking place. So once those two things are verified, they can go ahead and interact at a level where they're discussing products and product value and, and, and uh, you know, what the products are intended for and what they do and how they might interact with some things that they're using already. So that, to answer your question, at that point, they place their order either online or on a phone call and then the driver is dispatched to go and deliver the item directly to the person. Once the person is reached, and mind you, the vehicles can have no markings whatsoever. Just like that building will never have an advertisement, state law does not allow us to have any kind of advertisement on the building other than the address. So if you look at that building, and we brought some mock-ups to show you, but uh, to answer your question very specifically, the medicine ha has to get directly to that person and once that medicine is there with the driver, they again have to verify that driver's license or ID before the transaction can take place. So really the, the transactions are taking place in the pre, at the person's home where they can kind of relax and feel a little better about receiving information versus going to a building where there's, you know, they're in line with 100 other people and it's just very quick and they don't get much information. Okay, and, and so somebody mentioned, I don't know if it was uh, Randy or yourself, mentioned that, uh, or I think it was Councilwoman Maria, uh, that about cannabis and some other local businesses already, I mean, what's the difference between those cannabis products there to what you're referring to in regards to this, to, to your business, to your building? I, I don't know. I'm, I apologize. Uh, I'm not like, like Rite Aid or he something. He was like referring that. to Rite Aid and Dollar General. What's the, what's the difference between products that we're going to be offering the public that's 21 and over versus what Rite Aid offers? Well, because I heard somebody mention that they're Rite Aid or Dollar General. I don't know if they are or not. I mean, but what kind of products are they offering with cannabis products? versus to what you're offering. So, so, so it's, it's my understanding that it's not, they're not offering any, uh, uh, oh, Rite Aid, you mean Rite Aid. So the DEA, if I may take a couple of minutes here, the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, has taken off of their website any notion, any verbiage that says that cannabis is a gateway drug. They were sued, prove it, they couldn't prove it, they had to take it off. So a DE agent joined a company called Epidolix, joined their board, and Epidolix, who is owned by GW Pharmaceutical, big billion dollar company, became the first company in the United States to get FDA approval for a cannabis-derived drug. Now that drug is available to purchase, I'm not sure if this particular right it has it, but it's basically 
uh, a drug that is primarily CBD, which is one of the compounds in the plant, and it's designed to get people uh, some relief that have um, uh, certain type of seizures. So those products are already available, um, you know, uh, out on the open market, FDA approval. We don't need FDA approval for our drugs because the regulatory uh, agency that regulates us doesn't require that our products have FDA approval because cannabis has been shown historically not to have any reaction in the human body which kills anybody. Like you can die from alcohol, right? And you can get alcohol all up and down the street, all over the place here, right? All around us there's alcohol that you can buy. But there isn't a single documented case where anyone has died from cannabis. So why is everybody upset about cannabis and not about alcohol? That's, that's a great question that I, I mean, it, we're always trying to find the answer. And, and so here also in the, in the staff report I'm, I'm looking at, and this, this probably for Randy, says current code does not allow any retail sales of cannabis within the city. So how, well, because we're using cannabis for products already on a Rite Aid, and, but is it, is it or is it not? Well, the... How is that different? The, the city's cannabis regulations has that provision. Now, um, there, there's a disconnect between what may be uh, allowed in a drugstore with FDA and... Um, you know, a CBD product, which is derived from cannabis. And so, um, you know, the, the city council, when that ordinance was originally adopted, said we don't want any sales of cannabis. Now, there's, a, you know, as Mr. Larks has mentioned, there's a whole host of uh, medicinal products that have entered into the pharmaceutical um, um, uh, processing, and so they are, in fact, um, cannabis-derived, but they're kind of in another category, if you will, because they're going through um, the medical category, and they have uh, um, FDA um, regulations and approvals and so forth, and so... That's the best kind of a, a distinction I can make. Um, it's not a clean distinction, but um, it's a workable distinction, and, and, and that's um, how that ordinance um, that the city currently has evolved. Councilman Brooks, anything else? I, not at the moment. Thank you. Well, um, that's a number. I have a quick question. Is uh, delivery into our town already allowed? Meaning like another business from outside of a city already already delivering here in, in our city? Yes. Yes, deliveries are, are allowed. Um, because the state has kind of stepped in and said that um, even though a city may um, not have any retail cannabis, deliveries from outside that city, um, from the county or another city or what have you, can occur. And, and the key is, as I alluded to in my comments and in the staff report, is where is that cannabis sale originating from? Where is it being counted from? And so it's being counted from someplace else, not, not the city of Livingston. So for purposes of tax collection, for purposes of regulatory oversight, it's not a, um, a Livingston business that's making that delivery. So somebody else is cashing in on those, that sales tax, some other city or some other county? Um, yes. In, in, in sh short answer, yes. Um, um, some other location is getting um, the sales tax revenue and any other cannabis tax that's associated from that particular city. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Patem Garcia, any questions for the applicant? Thank you. Uh, 
At this moment, we're going to open the public hearing.